All right, so standing here next to one of my squash beds, and uh, I just wanted to make a little video note about uh, pest damages. So you can see things aren't doing too bad here. Um, I've got squash. These are uh, summer squash, patty pan squash, and we've got little squash here. Got mature squash over there, and then. We've got squash bugs, and uh, squash bugs are a bit of a pest, and uh, they're kind of sap sucker type beetles that go after the leaves and the tender young plants. And um, I know there's a lot of chemical controls that you can use, but I pretty much have a natural garden. I can't really say it's an organic one, but it's more or less a natural garden, and I generally generally let uh, nature take its course in here. So I have squash beetles in here and they're doing a bit of damage to the leaves. There's a little nest of them right there and uh, you can see going right through this I've got tomatoes, I've got squash over there, I've got squash over here but wait a second see all that's green and healthy and then I got to look over here to some of the summer squash and it's kind of yellow. It's not really stopping the squash from producing, but okay, they probably could do a little bit better than they are right now. So what's the difference between the two? Well, in a natural garden, the difference is generally going to be the pest and predator relationships that are going to be in your garden. So although the squash bug can seriously harm, and I'm going to try and get through here without stepping up too much. So although the squash bug can seriously harm uh, a crop, especially if you have tender young plants, they generally would not uh, harm very large and mature plants. And once you get them to a decent size, they will produce their fruit and the squash bugs, if kept in check, shouldn't harm them too much. So you can see over here, there's still damage. So what's the difference between this and the green thing over there? And as, as I said, it's the predator-pest relationships. So I have in this natural garden a lot of predators that take care of a lot of my problems. I'm still dealing with uh, a lot of slugs and stuff, but we'll get there. Um, they're not too bad, but they still have a lot of damage. But the predators need habitat and a place to stay. So for the squash bug, that would be parasitic insects. They require things like the radish plant. And so that is one radish. It's about seven and a half feet tall, but that's full of flowers. Those purple flowers you can see through the fence there. So I've got a giant radish plant. And uh, down here you've got a lot of uh, plants that are dill and parsley. So they develop an umbrellifera flower, type flower. So your dills, your parsleys, your carrots and stuff. And so I've got a whole bed right across here, right next to this luscious looking squash plant that's actually grown into the tomato bed. So, and I'm going to say that that's probably why this one's doing much better and much healthier and has a lot less predation on it than the summer squash over there, the patty pans, or the butternut over there. But then again, those other plants, they're not doing too bad because they're still getting some protection. They're not as close to where the parasitic insects would be hanging out, but they're still there. And you can see all along here, it's mostly the same deep green on all my squash, which is right next to a carrot that has gone to seed. That's your umbrelliferae flower. And that, that's that thing right there. So this one's pretty much gone to seed. But you're also right next to 
a radish plant and that's still in full flower and uh, that's still home to all the parasitic insects which is going to give protection to all the squash. And so that's how I take care of that problem, by not taking care of it and letting nature do it. And that is, that is a method of natural gardening, is just maintain the pest and predator populations in your garden. Because once you actually start using chemicals to wipe out certain species, you're going to disrupt the balance. And when your system is unbalanced, it's, uh, it's just not going to work the same. So, yep. So yeah, aim for the diversity of your garden. Aim for a diversity of insects, as well as birds and snakes and spiders. Um, and let them all have a place in your garden. And I think, or at least in my experience, gardens tend to work better. Yeah, so there it is, my version of pest control. Hope that it will uh, help some of you in establishing your gardens.